Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Before we begin this session, let us take a moment and pay tribute to all of our serving personnel and remember the sacrifice of those men and women killed or wounded in the line of duty. Thank you. J'aimerais souhaiter la bienvenue. I would like to wish a warm welcome to the Chiefs of Defence Staff of NATO member states who are here today for the first meeting of the Military Committee in Chiefs of Defence Staff session of 2020. During each of our sessions today, will have the support of our strategic commanders, Supreme Allied Commander Europe, General Todd Walters, and Supreme Allied Commander Transformation, General Lanata. 2019 was a memorable year with the historic uh, anniversaries that we celebrated but also because of the work that was done. We celebrated NATO's 70th anniversary, marking sec seven decades of continued evolution, adaptation to remain the most successful military alliance in history. Twelve allies observed their 20th, 15th and 10th accession anniversaries, and all NATO nations reinforced the open door policy by signing the accession protocol for the Republic of North Macedonia. And a particularly warm welcome, Vasco, to you to our table today. NATO commemorated 20 years since the beginning of the NATO-led Kosovo force. The NATO Science and Peace for Security program celebrated 60 years, having grown into one of NATO's major partnership tools, covering a wide range of issues, including cyber defense, response to terrorism and energy security. We mark the 25th anniversary of the Mediterranean Dialogue and the 15th anniversary of the Istanbul Cooperation Initiative, acknowledging once again, as we will today, the vital role that our partners play in NATO operations, missions, activities. We've strengthened our partnerships in Europe and beyond, deepening political dialogue, extending support and engagement with partner countries and international organizations, including our friends in the European Union and the United Nations. For the first time in 60 years, the NATO military strategy was agreed by you, the Chiefs of Defence, and updated to reflect the current th threats we face. This strategy is the handrail that guides and enables us to deliver safety and security to almost one billion people. So NATO is strong and our accomplishments continue to adapt to a changing security environment. Every new decision we take, both as NATO and as allies, is part of that process of adaptation. And we see the results of our work. We've taken additional steps to remain capable to fulfill our core tasks in the years to come. We continue to strengthen defence and deterrence, raising the readiness of our forces, increasing our ability to move them across the Atlantic and within Europe, and modernising our military command structure and headquarters. Since 2014, we have implemented the biggest reinforcement of collective defence in a generation. We strengthened our military posture from the Baltic Sea to the Black Sea. We have combat-ready troops in the eastern part of our alliance. We have declared an initial operating capability for the Joint Support and Enabling Command, which will help us to coordinate and safeguard the movement allied forces across Europe and the North Atlantic. 
we continue to demonstrate the Alliance's determination to deter threats and defend Alliance territory. In addition, our new Cyberspace Operations Centre under Sakur's command is now running in Mons in his headquarters. The first NATO counter-hybrid support team was deployed to our ally Montenegro with the aim of helping to strengthen the country's capabilities and deterring hybrid challenges. The NATO AWACS has completed a $1 billion midlife upgrade program incorporating the latest digital technology and a further £1 billion modernization contract was approved recently to provide new capabilities to operate AWACS to 2035. We've received the first of five NATO Allied Ground Surveillance aircraft, a clear demonstration of modernization and our investment to deliver leading edge capabilities for our shared security. We're investing 230 million euros in a facility for the long-term storage and maintenance of US military equipment pre-positioned in Poland. A large investment of Powitz able to host the equivalent of a brigade's worth of combat-ready equipment. Defence spending continues to increase. As the Secretary-General has announced, in 2019, an increase of 4.6%, the fifth year of growth. By the end of this year, 2020, Allies will have invested more than $130 billion since 2016 extra. And by 2024, we expect that number to be $400 billion. We've declared space an operational domain, recognised the importance of space in keeping us safe and tackling security challenges. Our approach to space will remain defensive. These are just a few examples of our ongoing work, but we will not stop there. We continue to improve readiness and resilience to respond to threats. We remain at the forefront of technological change with our people as well as our equipment, and we must remain resolute and determined in the face of terrorism. We continue to address in a measured and responsible way Russia's deployment of new intermediate-range missiles, which brought about the demise of the Intermediate-Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, which poses significant risks to Euro-Atlantic security. Over the next two days, we, the Allied Chiefs of Defence, will meet to discuss the outcome of the leaders' meeting in December and take decisions to adapt our military capabilities, strategy and plans in line with our 360-degree approach to security. We will meet in a few minutes the Secretary-General Jens Stoltenberg to provide the political context for our discussion. We will then discuss our ongoing operational commitments, force generation and future requirements. In dedicated sessions with our operational partners from Resolute Support, our mission in Afghanistan, the NATO mission in Iraq, and our K-4 mission in the Western Balkans. Reinforcing our continued commitment to these missions plays a central role in regional security and, of course, helps to train local forces. In Iraq, the safety of our personnel is paramount. We have currently suspended training activities, but our training mission continues. We monitor the situation very closely and we remain in close and regular contact with our friends in the US authorities. Last week, Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg spoke to President Trump and the Iraqi Prime Minister who required addition, seek additional support from NATO in the Middle East. The request will now be discussed at the political level through the North Atlantic Council. This afternoon, we will discuss the concept for the deference and deterrence, and deference, deterrence of the Euro Atlantic area and the new NATO warfighting capstone concepts. These concepts flow from the NATO military strategy, which sets out our priorities as well as our approach to current and future threats. The concept for the deterrence and defence of the Euro Atlantic area guides commanders on what we need to maintain our security and the resources for the future. It's bringing together our military thinking as we face an unpredictable world and deal with the consequences of a changed security environment. The warfighting concept looks forward 20 years, setting a vision to support Allied effort to develop military forces and identify potential gaps and to provide the necessary recommendations to ensure we're ready and able to meet the requirements of the future. 
General Lanata's leadership is providing opportunities for innovation, including the use of emerging and disruptive technologies to ensure NATO maintains its military advantage. Tomorrow, in the second day of our conference, we'll turn our attention to the southern flank and discuss our work to enhance cooperation with partners, including the African Union, the European Union, and the United Nations. The framework for the South is an integral part of the Alliance strength and deterrence and defence posture. We've never had throughout history the luxury of deciding which threat to focus on. 29 nations look to NATO for peace and security. In a territory ranging from Europe to North America, the Atlantic Ocean, almost the North Pole, the Tropic of Cancer and the East Coast of North America. We refer to this as SACUR's area of responsibility. We will also look tomorrow at how we enable SACUR's area of responsibility, including our new command in Norfolk, Virginia and the United States, Joint Forces Command Norfolk, and the Joint Support and Enabling Command in Ulm in Germany. All of these elements help protect different parts of the Alliance and allow us to add more forces to act quickly and reinforce. In our final session, we will meet with our partner Georgia to receive an update on the current security situation and discuss future cooperation. Although we continue to adapt, we still today deter and, if necessary, defend. We have over 20,000 people deployed directly from NATO on operations, missions and activities. Our people who are deployed, your people who are deployed, guarantee the safety and security. Away from home, serving in difficult and arduous conditions to provide that peace and stability. And I, on behalf of the Chiefs of Defence, wish to acknowledge their bravery and sacrifice in helping us keeping it safe. May I conclude today with a special welcome to two new members of the family of the Chiefs of Defence. Nous avons deux nouvelles chefs de l'État major. New Chiefs of Defence staff from Romania and the United States. And Mark, vous arrivez à un temps décisif pour l'OTAN. You have come at a decisive time for NATO. We are currently uh, adapting NATO, an adaptation that began in 2014, uh, an in-depth adaptation. Our efforts to continue to adapt the alliance will continue. The discussions and decisions taken over the next two days will clearly keep us busy in 2020. Thank you very much.